What's up guys, Shade Tree Surgeon here and Right, so welcome back to the shop and guys, it's dark. That happened quick. It's a good battery, there we go. So, it's Halloween style. Um, another rant video. So someone sent me a video to a guy called the Shade Tree Surgeon. Oh, he does this KTM video when he's replacing his uh, piston and he's looking at his cylinder and all the rest of it. Piston, which would be very easy to do. This thing is just like you look at it the wrong way, it's going to get a nick in it. But, for instance, I want to do something just a bit different. Um, completely different. I don't know about a bit different. It's completely different. Uh, so, someone sent me this video saying, what do you think? And it's this Shade Tree Surgeon guy who's doing this uh, rebuild on his two-stroke KTM. And he's never done it before. He says he's never done it before. And to be quite honest, it is a very good example. It's a very good video. I really did enjoy it. Uh, there was a few pointers. He does all the way through it say, look, I don't know what I'm doing. Here And today we're going to be doing a rebuild on my 2016 KTM 300 XCW. Or at least I'm going to be doing my best to do a rebuild on it. I've never actually done this before. So this is going to be not only an instructional video for anybody who's watching this, but also a little test for me to see if I can actually do this. The whole point of two strokes is that they are easily rebuildable. So let's put that theory to the test. And this is proof of if you don't know what you're doing, you can still make good content. You can still make a good video. It's very interesting to see. And it brings up a lot of points of what this guy did and didn't do that was, you know, worth talking about. So let me just clarify. <laughs> I think it is a very good video. <coughs> um, he does mention in it, I don't know what I'm doing. He's done all the right things for someone who doesn't know what they're doing. He gets a mate who's got a bit more experience than him. So, uh, Jason Q, why is his arm black? Uh, is here to give me a hand built rebuilding two strokes because um, Jason used to be into scooters, so he knows a thing or two about two strokes. He gets, he says the manual, he's looked through the manual, he understands the manual, he's doing some of the procedures it says in the manual. There's a few things he missed, uh, and I left a comment in his video saying, brilliant video these are a few things for other people just as much as you in the comments it was stuff like you know stick a bit of two stroke uh, oil on the uh, wrist pin um on the uh, needle bearing the small end needle bearing uh, on the side of your piston skirts maybe a tiny bit on there just get your hands and then just rub it on it on your rings stuff like that um he was talking about talking the bolts and there's two that you get this a lot in two strokes especially where the power valve is, is they put the nuts for the studs inside behind them covers. And if you've only got a socket, you can't, you can't get it a torque wrench in there. God damn! Hell yeah. So I'm not sure what we should do next, but we got that on there. It's looking good. It's moving freely. So we're gonna go ahead and bolt the cylinder back to the case now and since half the bolts that hold it on are actually in weird spots we can't use a torque wrench so we're gonna go with the old the old good and tight a lot of people are saying stuff like crow's feet and all the rest of it if you look at them nuts unless you've got a ring one it's very hard to even get a crow's foot in there and what i advise to him and other people in that situation is you've got to expose nuts wind them down <coughs> by hand until you get really close um, so you can see that the base gasket compresses and then you, you're getting close, you know, you're moving it and it's quite easy, it's quite easy, it's quite, oh, hang about, it's getting a bit tighter now, it's really, the clamp, this is where it's applying the clamping load, it's taking up all the, basically, the clearance and all the slack, if you want to call it that, and I'll say, look, when you get there on all the bolts, just torque your ones you can get to, and then look at how much degree that is, if they feel about the same and you go 90 degrees and then your torque wrench clicks on them two, then do that corner one, get your other one across from it, torque that just with a spanner so you're rotating about the same, do your other one, torque that, and then you get the feel for it. You know what I mean? 
and that's not saying as soon as you get the feel for it never use a torque wrench again in those applications if you can't get a crow's foot in if you can't get at it um, but you have other ones exposed that's a roundabout way to get really close um, people think that torque specs and i was saying this to uh, andy and tim yesterday that torque specs are there just so you don't over tighten stuff it's so you don't under tighten stuff just as much it's all about the clamping load it's all about basically a fixing a fixing two things that might be trying to pull apart like your head studs are or your cylinder studs are or it's for, for stuff in shear stuff like that you know what i mean it's so you it's the correct torque this is why torque settings are very very important um there was a, a few other things he said it's like he had all these base gaskets and i said those base gaskets are there for so you can vary your squish which is basically messing around with your uh, your compression ratio and you get your old gasket measure that do not find the closest one to that always find the one that's a bit bigger than that so let's just say you measure your old one so this is your old one and let's just say it's 1.2 millimeters when you measure it right if in your kit you have a 1.2 and a 1.3 go for the 1.3 one because this has been crushed it's been squished especially if it's the cardboard jobbies if you're unsure squish it and find out you know what i mean stick your barrel back on don't put your piston in stick your barrel back on torque your nuts to where they should be whip your new one out and if it's squished to the same then you're all golden if you squish it and it's smaller you need to go a size up <coughs> there's also squish um, there's also measuring your squish band, stuff like that, bit of solder, whichever way you want to do it, bit of plasticine, whatever. And I've done videos in the past, we'll re-go over that, because they were all videos and shit. But anyway, um, it was just pointers, you know, I was just saying, you know, you are a guy who hasn't done this. And he read it and goes, oh, cheers for that, these are wonderful points and all the rest of it. And he learns something, so next time, he can then, in the next video, say, ooh, last time around, people commented... I'm going to do it this, this, and this, and see how that works out. And that's the other thing as well. I'm not just going to do it and then just say that's gospel. I'm just going to see how that works out. And there was a lot of people who comment stuff like that. Um, not just mine, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to rob all the glory of everybody else. Um, you know, he could have done with measuring his ring gaps, stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. blah. There's, there's just loads of little things, little tiny things, that come generally with experience. Or if you thoroughly read the manual, you'll pretty much get all of it. You know, just stuff like that. But talking the bolts, they just say talk them. They don't tell you how to get around the problems that that, that might ensue from their design. Um, but a very good video. Like I say, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not tight. You know, he's not bundling in there going, what you want to do? It's like, we're going to do this. I hope this is right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just stuff like that. And then there was a guy who commented saying, oh, fucking hell, that, that piston's fine. But it's up to him, it's his machine, if he wants to sort it out. And we're only looking from afar through a video of what we see. Um, the next thing is, like he says, you know, he puts the, the top ring on first. And then he makes the comment of, don't be an idiot like me, put the... Ugh, bloody camera. He then makes a comment about, um, don't be an idiot like me, put the bottom ring on first so you can get the... So you don't have to go over the other ring. And the official instructions say put the lettering up. So that's what I'm going to do. Here's another tip. Put the bottom one in first, you dingus. Jesus. <laughs> Stuff like that. It's good. It's good. People, you know, if you're watching this, you see from the title, first time doing this, that's going to attract loads of guys who haven't done this. Oh, I've done this before. I need a bit of confidence boosting or I need to see how it's done or whatever. They go da 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 in YouTube and bang, they find this guy's channel. The fucking video is really good. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be overly pretty. He swears in it. He's just being himself. So hats off to the guy. Brilliant video. You know what I mean? Is is it absolutely perfect? No. Does it have to be absolutely perfect? No. Just as long as he makes it very clear to his audience that he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And to be quite honest, for a guy who doesn't know what he's doing, he's done pretty much a good job. Um... Yeah, you know, it's it's nice to see. And this doesn't mean I want a plethora of videos coming. What about this guy? What about this guy? But you get what I mean. It, when you see something that's good, uh, it's good. And it's all part of review. If you do good work, generally, I don't do videos. And maybe I should do some more about guys who do good work. Um, 
But if they're doing the job right, then what else can I say apart from they're doing a good job? They've done it right. You know what I mean? It, it, it's more that I'm more bothered about the guys who are going to fuck your stuff and cost you money and doing shoddy things and just oh because they have bad consequences. People say he just says them just because everyone likes to see a fight and it's not that. It's literally the fact is these guys are trying to you know it's going to cost you your stuff and there's no repercussion from that. You can't fucking. You know what you're gonna do? Send Dell an invoice? You know what I mean? <laughs> He's just tell you fuck. Well, he won't tell you anything. He'll just delete it. I'll put it in the bin. But um, yes, very good video. Very very good video. I like it. It was good. It was it was not only that is it was fun to watch. You know what I mean? It wasn't too long. He just got on with it. Um, yeah. You know, like I said, there's a few pointers in there. I probably missed a few. My comment. He pinned it. Thank you very much, dude. Um, my comment is at the top of that video. Oh, it was. <laughs> um, you know, and I made the points in there because I can sat there, I've got the video in front of me, I can review it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, good video, very good video. And that's kind of what I want to see. You know, the guy's giving it a go. And it's not as hard as people think. Don't do an RG500, there's fucking loads to it. But <laughs> loads more to it than that. You know, his bike was running fine, he swapped the parts out. For any little mistakes that he may have made or something, they might bite him in the ass, they might not. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.